Welcome to the Nature of Teaching Professional Development Webinar Series. My name is Lauren Timi, and I am the Ag and Natural Resources Educator for Purdue Extension in Delaware County. Today's webinar will cover the unit Ashes to Ashes, Exploring Ecosystem Succession and Disturbance. This unit will describe how an ecosystem is constantly changing and what causes those changes. Joining me today is Jared Brook. He's an Extension Wildlife Specialist for, the, for Purdue University. Today, he will be introducing the unit followed by some videos of the individual lesson activities. I'll finish the webinar highlighting additional resources and the procedure to obtain your certificate of completion for this webinar. And with that, Jared, I'll turn things over to you. Thanks, Lauren, and thanks everyone for joining us. Um, so this lesson plan, this unit is really set up to help identify and introduce and describe the concepts of succession and disturbance, which are extremely important concepts and foundational concepts to understand, to understand how ecosystems function, but also how to understand how wildlife and their habitat fits within those ecosystems. So we're gonna be talking about those terms, succession and disturbance, and why ecosystems are constantly changing through time. So this lesson and unit is set up for K through five classrooms, it has two lessons that run between 45 and 60 minutes. And they are they build on one another. So the first lesson um, is used directly in the second lesson, which builds upon that first lesson. So the unit objectives are to introduce succession and identify the different stages of succession, understand the importance and benefits of disturbances in ecosystems, and recognize that animals use different successional stages of an ecosystem, depending on what their habitat requirements are and what they need to, to survive. So the Indiana standards that this lesson covers include science, English, and math. And you can see all those different state standards there on that overview page. Some good reference materials would be a common Indiana mammals publication, which is free for download some sort of science, um, especially a biology or environmental science book that talks about succession, uh, maybe provide some charts and graphs things as well. And then some sort of mammal guide or book. The required materials are a land, lanyards or yarn um, and your succession and disturbance cards, which are at the end of the, this unit, which are printable. Your succession and fire and disturbance worksheets fire worksheets, which again are at the end of this unit, and then a picture of a prairie or forest fire, and then a picture of a, a house fire as well. So this should give you some background information. I'm going to kind of introduce some of these very important concepts that we're going to cover in this unit to kind of give you background information and um, let you know how it fits in this lesson plan. So the first concept that we're going to talk about is ecological succession, or often called plant succession. And what I like to refer to it as why you have to mow your grass. So this is just the change in the ecosystem or the plant communities over time. So this chart here is what would happen in a field or field succession. So if you're driving by a crop field and the farmer stopped planting that crop field, this is the change in the plant community over time that you would expect. So after that first year of not planting a crop in that field, you would first see things like dandelions, weeds in the field, so a lot of annual plants. After two or three years of not planting that field and just letting it go, you would see perennial plants start to come in, maybe some native grasses and things like that. By three or five years after not planting that field or not mowing or doing anything else, you'd see shrubs. And eventually you would see seedlings, saplings, young for young trees, and the mature trees like um, maybe some pines and hardwoods. And this is the same thing that would happen in your, in your yard if you stopped mowing the grass. So if one summer you just decided to stop mowing the grass, that first summer that grass is going to go really, really, really tall. And then maybe two or three years after you decide to stop mowing the grass, you're going to start to have some shrubby plants come in there, maybe some young trees, things like blackberry, maybe a little cottonwood, little seedlings of, of plants that have either blown in or been planted by different wildlife species. 
And then eventually if you stop mowing your yard for the next 10 to 12, 15 years, you're gonna have a lot of woody plants, seedlings and saplings in your yard. And if you stop mowing your, your yard for 50 years, your yards are gonna turn into a forest. Um, so this concept of succession is really important because different wildlife species and different plants are gonna be found in those different stages of succession. So if you're into history or wanna incorporate a history lesson into this unit, um, this concept of succession or ecological succession was actually first theorized and discovered by a professor at the University of Chicago while he was studying what is now the Indiana Dunes National Park. So you can watch this video from the National Park Service that kind of describes the history of the Indiana Dunes National Park and how the concept of succession was discovered uh, by studying the sand dunes at the National Park. So by viewing the sand dunes and how the plant communities change from the shore of Lake Michigan to several um, hundreds of yards inland, how those plant communities change over that space, they're actually able to discover plant succession and how it works through time. So pretty cool connection to the history of succession in Indiana here. So along with succession, another very important concept is disturbance. So a disturbance is a natural or unnatural force that changes the successional stage of an ecosystem. So in the case of your yard, the disturbance is the mower. So the mower is what stops your yard from becoming a forest. So if you stopped mowing your yard, again, in a hundred years, your yard would become a forest. But by disturbing the yard, by mowing it frequently, you are stopping that ecosystem from advancing to become a forest. So you're maintaining it in grass. And we can think of the same thing happening in, in say a forest environment where we have something, some sort of disturbance coming through like a fire that may remove the existing vegetation. And then in place of that existing vegetation, you're gonna have different plants growing in that site until eventually, if there's no more disturbances on that site, especially here in Indiana, you will end up with a forest. So when we talk about disturbances, we have lots of natural um, or human type disturbances. So as some examples of what a disturbance may be would be fire, whether that's a fire started by lightning strikes, um, a fire that started under certain conditions like this picture here, which is a prescribed fire, where we're actually setting a fire on purpose to maintain and restore certain ecosystems or by a, or some sort of fire like a wildfire. We have storms, things like tornadoes, hurricanes, straight line winds, which can remove trees from a site, which would be a disturbance. Insects, so insects that may kill trees can change the plant community or the successional stage. Timber harvest, by uh, harvesting the timber from a site, we can revert that site back to an earlier successional stage. Flooding, disease, uh, disease in trees and plants, especially. And then grazing. So grazing by bison is what helped maintain the tall grass prairie ecosystem. Without fire and without grazing, most of the tall grass prairie ecosystem would have turned into a forest. But it has a history of being um, burned through lightning strikes and by Native Americans and a history of being grazed by bison as well. So now that you have a, a better idea of what succession and what disturbance are, now we need to figure out how does that relate to wildlife habitat? Well, this chart here shows a really good depiction of how different successional stages provide habitat for various wildlife species. And that's based on their habitat requirements. So by looking at the chart here, we can see that some of those earlier successional stages where you may have annual grasses or forbs or um, maybe even bare ground, that's gonna provide really good habitat for certain wildlife species, in this case, the spotted sandpiper or a morning dove. Whereas a, those later successional stages where you have a forest are gonna provide habitat for things like Eastern gray squirrels, fishers, Indiana bats, and, and oven birds and so on. 
You have some species that are generalists, meaning that they are gonna be found in most, if not all of these different successional stages. And the, the one that we talk about here a lot in Indiana would be white-tailed deer. And then you also have specialized wildlife that are only gonna be found in one successional stage. And so if you look at that chart going from left to right, you see that on the left side, we have um, bare ground that goes into a grassland ecosystem and then to a shrubland ecosystem and then to a, a forest ecosystem. Well, we're only gonna find grasshopper sparrows in this case in that grassland ecosystem. So once we start to get trees and shrubs and things, we're not gonna find grasshopper sparrows anymore. And the same thing can be said for an Eastern gray squirrel in a forested environment. We're not gonna find Eastern gray squirrels out in the middle of a prairie, right? We're only gonna find them in forested environments. So this, this helps kind of picture how wildlife and habitat are related to succession and disturbance. And to help students understand the concept of habitat, we have a lesson plan that builds on nature hikes. So it uses nature hikes as a way to introduce the concept of habitat. So here's another good graphic that kind of shows the relationship between wildlife habitat, succession, and disturbance. In this case, our disturbance is grazing by that cow in the middle of the picture. We could replace that cow with a bison and it'd be a similar type relationship where the, the more those animals graze, so the higher their grazing intensity, the farther to the left of the graph we are, um, the shorter the vegetation is, and the more we're providing habitat for birds like upland sandpipers. The lower our grazing intensity, the taller the vegetation, the farther right we move to the graph. And then we're gonna provide taller, denser vegetation for things like Henzo sparrows. And then if we completely remove that cow from the picture and they're outside the fence there, then we're gonna start getting more shrubs and maybe some small trees in there. And that's where we're gonna provide habitat for birds like field sparrows or indigo buntings. So this really depicts kind of the relationship between a disturbance, in this case grazing, and succession in wildlife habitat. And if you want more information about this kind of relationship, there's a really good video from the Nature Conservancy at Kankakee Sands, which is in Northwest Indiana, and it talks about why they reintroduced bison back to the area to help manage those prairie ecosystems. So the first lesson really builds on those concepts of succession and disturbance. So it introduces the concepts through an interactive skit where the teacher plays the role of the narrator in the skit and the students act out the different parts of an ecosystem, the different plant communities and disturbances to help students understand the relationship between succession, plant communities and disturbance. Um, the materials you'll need are lanyards with succession and disturbance cards and succession and disturbance worksheets, which are at the back of the unit. Lesson one script, a fire worksheet and fire pictures, which are all included in the lesson plan. So we're gonna have um, Jenna here walk you through how to conduct lesson one. I'm Jenna Neese, and I'm the Purdue Extension Ag and Natural Resources Educator in Putnam County, Indiana. I want to take a few minutes to go over the nature of teaching Ashes to Ashes, We All Grow Up, Lesson 1 on Secession and Disturbance. This lesson will provide youth the chance to learn about how an ecosystem is constantly changing and what causes those changes. It meets up with Indiana grade level standards, third through fifth, in science, third and fourth in English, and fourth grade mathematics. In preparation for this um, lesson, you will need to print off copies of the Secession and Disturbance Worksheet, the Fire Worksheet, the Secession and Disturbance Script, the succession and disturbance cards, obtain lanyards or yarn, and have images of a prairie fire and a house fire. 
To start this lesson off, you will want to discuss what secession and disturbance is and go over the four secessional stages. As part of the discussion, students will be able to complete the first seven questions on the secession and disturbance worksheet. Next, you will want to share the image of the prairie fire with the students and ask them if they think the fire is good, bad, or if they are unsure. Before you actually do the hands-on activity, you're going to take a few minutes to fill out a worksheet. On the worksheet, the students will take some um, time to think about whether they feel that a natural fire is good, bad, or if they're unsure. Once they have their thoughts put on paper, you can take a few minutes to write on a board and state whether they think that it's good, bad, or if they're not sure before they do the activity. And then you'll follow back up with it after the activity is done and compare their thoughts on whether a natural fire was good, bad, or if they're unsure. The thoughts the students have about the prairie fire can be written on the fire worksheet. You will want to use tally marks on the board to represent the student's final decision on if a fire is good, bad, or if they are unsure before the skit. You may want to go ahead and make bar charts on the board displaying the student's views on prairie fire and a house fire. From there, the students will need to take out the secession and disturbance worksheet. They will then develop and write out a hypothesis about what they think will happen if a natural forest fire occurs. Next, it is time for the interactive secession and disturbance skit. In preparation for this, you will need to assign the students various roles. Those roles will include an annual, a perennial, a shrub, a tree, fire, wind, a bird, and a narrator. The students will need to act out those individual roles based on what is said during the script. You will need to use your lanyard or yarn to allow the student to be able to wear their role as they act it out, similar to this. If time allows, you can allow the student to color or decorate their role. During the skit, the narrator will read the bold sections while the italicized sections will allow you to coordinate movement of the students as well as add information about what is happening. You may want to do the skit more than once to ensure the students have a grasp of what is being explained. Once you are done with the skit, review the four successional stages with your students and have them discuss how they saw those stages while doing the skit. Then have them look at their hypothesis they wrote before doing the activity. Have them compare and contrast whether or not their hypothesis was correct or incorrect. This is a good time to talk about the advantages and disadvantages with your students on the impact a natural fire has on a forest. Finally, show the students the picture of the prairie fire again and ask them if their views on fire after performing the skit have changed. They will now return back to the fire worksheet to record their thoughts in the after section. You will once again want to tally the student's thought on the board as to if a prairie fire is good, bad, or if they are unsure. After you have all the tally marks, you can make bar charts representing the student's thoughts on prairie fire before and after the skit and discuss why the chart may have changed. If you would like a copy of the Nature of Teaching, Ashes to Ashes, We All Grow Up, Lesson 1, Including Teacher's Guide. Download the free curriculum off the Nature of Teaching website. I'm Jenna. Great, so that is um, an overview of Lesson 1 and how to actually conduct it in the classroom. So Lesson 2 is very similar. It, it works the, 
almost the same exact way through a skit with a narrator and students interacting out the different parts. But now we're going to add the concept of wildlife habitat through succession and disturbance. So we're going to add more roles of different wildlife species into this skit to allow students to understand how these different successional stages provide habitat for different wildlife species. So we'll let um, Jenna explain to you how to use lesson two in the classroom. I'm Jenna Neese, and I'm the Purdue Extension Ag and Natural Resources Educator in Putnam County, Indiana. I'd like to take a few minutes to talk to you about the nature of teaching Ashes to Ashes Lesson 2 on wildlife habitat through secession and disturbance. In this lesson, youth will develop an understanding of how an ecosystem is constantly changing, what causes those changes, and how the different wildlife interact throughout the various successional stages. This lesson matches up with Indiana State standards for third through fifth grade science, third and fourth grade English, and fourth grade mathematics. Now in preparation for this lesson, you will need to obtain copies of this succession and disturbance worksheet, the fire worksheet, the succession and disturbance cards, the script for the wildlife through succession and disturbance activity, string, lanyards, yarn, and then images of a prairie and a house fire. To start this lesson off, you will want to discuss what succession and disturbance is and go over the four successional stages. As part of the discussion, students will be able to complete the first seven questions on the succession and disturbance worksheet. Next, you would want to share the images of the prairie fire with the students and ask them if they think that fire is good, bad, or if they are unsure. Students should record their thoughts about the natural fire on the fire worksheet. As the students share their thoughts, you will want to use tally marks on the board to represent the student's final decision on if a natural fire is good, bad, or if they are unsure before the skit. Now you'll want to go through the same process, but this time you're going to show the students the image of the house fire. You may want to take a few minutes to then develop a bar chart on the board that shows the students their views on the natural fire versus the house fire. Then the students need to take out their succession and disturbance worksheet. They will fill out the bottom where they develop a hypothesis on what they think will happen to an ecosystem when a natural fire occurs. Once that is done, it is time for the wildlife habitat through succession and disturbance interactive skit. In preparation for the skit, you will need to assign roles to the students. The roles include being an annual, a perennial, a shrub, a tree, fire, wind, a bird, bear, woodpecker, turtle, mouse, snake, a grouse, a hawk, hummingbird, and a deer. You'll also need to assign someone the narrator role. Now, once you assign the roles, the students will need to attach their label with the lanyard, string, or yarn. That way they can essentially wear their role. Now, if you have time, you may allow the students 
to decorate their label to make it a little bit more interesting to them. Then it's time to actually do the skit. During the skit, the narrator will read the bold sections while the italicized sections will allow you to coordinate movement of the students, as well as add information about what is happening. You may want to do the skit more than once to ensure the students have a grasp of what is going on. Once you are done with the skit, it's time to review the four successional stages with your students. Have them discuss how they saw the different successional stages throughout the skit. Then they'll need to revisit their hypothesis and discuss whether it was correct or incorrect based on what they saw during the skit. This is a good time to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of a natural fire with the students. Next, have the students take a look at the prairie fire again. Then they'll need to take out their fire worksheet and write on it their thoughts about a prairie fire now after they have completed the skit. You'll then want to go back up to the board and develop a bar chart displaying the students thoughts on whether a fire is good, bad, or if they're unsure after they've now completed the skit. You can then compare and contrast the two bar charts with the class to see what changes has occurred based on their new understanding of how an ecosystem changes. Now, for more information about the nature of teaching Ashes to Ashes Lesson 2, Wildlife Habitat Through Succession and Disturbance, including a teacher's guide, to download the free curriculum off the Nature of Teaching website. So you may have noticed that we had a a slight name change there. Um, so the lesson that she's referencing is the same lesson that we're covering today, just a little bit of a name change. Um, and so those are the really the, the two lessons that are in this unit. And they are really meant to help describe those concepts of succession, disturbance, and then how wildlife habitat relates to different stages of succession, um, which are foundational concepts when we talk about ecosystems and how they change and then wildlife as well. So with that, back to you, Lauren. Great, thanks, Jared. So before you finish up, do you have any final words or um, quick tips for how to pull this off successfully? There are a lot of pieces to this. Yes, there are a lot of pieces. Um, it seems to work better when the, the educator or the teacher is the narrator because they can kind of control, control the scene um, it tends to work better with a little bit of older students as well, you know, old, older elementary, because they uh, are more willing to, to serve in their roles and not as uh, run around as much. So. Great. Great. Thanks, Jared. And thank you, everybody else, for watching uh, and joining us for this Nature of Teaching Professional Development webinar covering the unit in Ashes to Ashes. Uh, as Jared said, slight name change, uh, exploring ecosystem succession and disturbance. We hope you enjoyed learning with us and consider participating in additional professional development webinars offered by the Nature of Teaching team. Until then, thank you for engaging our youth with nature.